cool. So, I don't often get letters. I mean, seriously, a letter? Do they even make paper anymore? I frowned over the foreign, lightweight message. It's not exactly what I expected to see when I walked into the station this morning. I was expecting to dejectedly peruse case files of half a dozen various murders, all, all of which would involve a variety of drugs, hookers, and tempers gone wild. Life isn't fun in the big city. Life isn't fun for anyone these days. The letter had an old-fashioned stamp on it, a picture of some old man long since dead. Who was the man? I shrugged. He's probably irrelevant in the long term of things, but apparently important enough to be put on outdated postage. I scanned the rest of the letter to Detective Gennaro D'Angelo, Box 056, NYPD, Police Station, 21st Precinct, New York, New York, 10468. Certainly my physical address. As for the sender, I've read about people going cold after sun shock or going numb. It wasn't like that for me. My heart pounded harder than I thought it possibly could have, every beat sending hot blood coursing through my body. Washed in sudden unwanted adrenaline, my entire body ached to move, to do something. But all I could do was stand stock still, taking in the impossibility of the situation. This letter, this antique of an age long since past, sent from a person who could not possibly be alive. With trembling hands, I carefully pried the paper apart, cursing when I accidentally tore it. Slowly, ever so slowly, I removed the note neatly folded inside. Dear Gennaro, it began. I fear that this is the end. We stood out in the rain. Of course we did. When was it not raining in the good old Big Apple? I said, I sighed petulantly and lit a cigarette. Before I could take one blessed drag, a metallic thumb and forefinger clamped down on the ignited end, effectively destroying my chance at nicotine-influenced bliss. Was that entirely necessary? I growled at my partner. Rex stared at me quizzically, or at least I think it was quizzical. With robots, you couldn't always be certain. He pulled a cigarette from my lips and withdrew it and threw it into a puddle on the road. Detective Gennaro, you requested that I stop you before you attempt to smoke in pursuit of your goal to quit altogether. Was I wrong in this situation? I sighed. I had forgotten about that. And besides, he added, we are undercover. You must not draw any attention from our target, and speaking of her, she's on the move again. I swore. Darting from our place of vigil, we attempted to keep up with the young blonde woman navigating her way through the crowded sidewalks. Her name was Teresa Carlton, a young shopkeeper who we believe had witnessed a murder. We hoped that whoever was keeping her quiet might try to make a move on her if they thought she was unprotected, or that she might lead them or that she might lead us to her handlers. So far, the plan wasn't working out so well. Perhaps we should have taken her into protective custody instead, remarked Re instead remarked Rex. I shot him a glare. Yeah, perhaps we should have. Somehow, the girl was making ground, fast. Just when it seemed she might get out of sight, a shot rang out over the crowd. Oh hell, I yelled. <laughs> Didn't mean for that to rhyme. Somebody screamed. The crowd dispersed in any direction they could go. NYPD, get down! Rex and I pulled out our sidearms and took aim, but it was useless. It would appear that we were not the only hunters, Rex remarked. He bent down to examine the girl. Curious, he muttered. What's up, I asked, bending down to join him. In the girl's hand, she has etched something in it. A message of sorts. My stomach flipped. What is it? Beware Lex Rex. And that's it for me. Hmm. Adrian. I think your time is up, Valak. Huh? Your time's up. What? Your time's up. Uh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Uh, no? Yes. You've gone ten minutes over time. You could not do this to me! Yes, shh, I shh, can. Shh, shh. We, have, we have neighbors around. Keep keep your voice you know, not so elevated. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can and I will. <laughs> How much longer? Admittedly, he's got three pages to my two. One and a half, so... I'll give him credit for that. Mm. Unfortunately, he has no idea how to pull himself away from his work. <laughs> and to admit he's lost. Don't look at me. 
Are you trying to finish the entire story? No, 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 it's not the story. It's a tiny, 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 tiny piece. If it's so tiny, why don't you, uh, you know, finish it really, really fast? <laughs> it doesn't work well under pressure, I find. Mm. So, now we get to watch Falak. Right. Feverishly over his keyboard. So how do you think I did, Jixon? Uh, that was, uh, was pretty interesting. Um, I'm contemplating whether or not to uh, bleep out the swear word in there. You, you know? can if you like. Except Your channel. People. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I don't know why that just came to mind, but <laughs> that's not the premise of the story, you know? Yeah. Um, it's uh, uh, interesting. Um, it's about... I don't know. It, it, I'd, I'd have to read more to understand the story better, and so that's a it's a good a good snare, you know, mm. to get me to buy the book. That's the uh, little spoiler you put out. Mm. You know, for for doing that in just half an hour, you know, that's that's pretty good. I don't think I could do that. Well, thank you. I'm not uh, I'm not a very good writer. No, I'm not particularly that good myself, but are you done yet? Dude, seriously. I'm done. Okay. okay. Let's Finally. Let's put the mic onto him. I'll and you're going to read it. I have to read it. Yes. Yes. Okay, Dude, you sound like a child. Who is, right. Who's going to see this? Uh, like the everyone? YouTubes? <laughs> um, okay. Um. <clears throat> Mommy likes the red ribbons. Okay, okay. Maybe, what? Maybe you should be a little bit more quiet. What? I don't want to be quiet. <laughs> okay. What time is it? It's 11. Yeah, no one's sleeping at 11:30. <clears throat> yeah. Mommy likes the red ribbons. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. His hands twirled. His fingers danced like spider's legs. Meticulous, precise, speedy, perfect, like a machine. The slippery, smooth red material was spun around itself, then with a tug, snapped into a lovely bow. Mommy likes the soft fur. She likes the fuzzy feeling. She likes it against her skin. He carefully gathered the brown hair and sprinkled it like sugar over his handiwork. What was once a bear's sticky blob roughly resembled the shape of a classic teddy bear, now began to take life as the brown fur rained over it, sticking to the surface. He ever so carefully laid his ribbons on the ears, then he tugged the corners of his mouth upward, left first, then right lagging after. That's what people did when they were pleased with something, right? He was pleased. I hope you like it, Mommy. I hope you love it, because I love you, Mommy, and I want you to be happy. Suddenly, the corners of his mouth dropped, his eyes locked in place, a finger landed softly on his lips. It's missing something, he whispered. Yes, it was missing something. Eyes, beautiful black eyes. Now where can I find some eyes? He's ten, about five foot, black hair, blue eyes. Please, please tell me you saw him. Catherine was frantic, heart thudding painfully in her chest, and a pang of despair shot through her body as the casual mall shopper shook his head, staring beneath a furrowed, disturbed brow. She swore, launching past the man as she bolted through the mall, weaving through people like irritating plants on an overgrown trail. She had to find him. Mark, she had to find him. How had he gotten out of the facility, and why was he in this area? What was he doing? There were no answers to the swarm of questions that plagued her mind, but one thing she knew for certain. Mark, he wasn't safe. There was a scream, distant, muffled, cut short. It was outside. Catherine's heels dug into the smooth, hard floor, and she spun, launching down the exit hall to her right. Surroundings blurred as she rushed the big metal doors, slamming into them, flying out the mall, stumbling, flare... Um, that should be light. Light flaring in her eyes. The sudden... As uh, the sudden smell of garbage and grime assaulting her nostrils, she sk skidded a few steps, regaining her balance, then lifted her head. It was an alley at the side of the mall, hardly ever used, but there for the sake of having an emergency exit. Down one way led to the parking lot. The other... Mommy? Ca Catherine's stomach lurched. Bile slipped into her throat as she gagged, one foot sliding back, her eyes spread open wide like saucers. Mark, the small boy, if he could be called that stood over a body, a young Asian woman with gaping holes of red in her face. Her black eyes were held delicately like olives pierced on Mark's fingers. His fingers were pointed, silvery metal at the tip, protruding from the fleshy coating at his knuckles, which covered the rest of the body, er, the rest of his body, making him 
seem human, but he wasn't. He was a creation. He was her creation. Mommy, it wasn't ready yet. You weren't supposed to see it just yet. It was supposed to be a surprise for you, Mommy. Then he smiled. He smiled. Then she saw the other body. Lying behind him, limp, pale, a man, his hair partially torn from his scalp, blood soaking his torso, pooling beneath him, his stomach torn open, white red-stained ribs poking up into the air. His organs were at Mark's feet, arranged, stacked, a, liver, a stomach, a liver, a thyroid, placed to look like a bear. The bloody mess was coated in the man's very hair, and atop its head, intestines tied into ribbons. Do you like the red ribbons, Mommy? Um... um. Okay, what? I give him points for freaking me out. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? Um... It's <laughs> not entirely what I expected. Uh... Well, very, it's very a... Very child-friendly. It's a murder mystery, man. <laughs> Come on. You just kind of took the mystery out of it. <laughs> well, no, there was a mystery, because the at the mystery beginning... The mystery is who the kid is, I suppose. And, and, and at the beginning was the mystery, because you, you don't know what he's doing, really, because I left it really vague, you know? And then yeah. at the end, you figure out, oh, it's all made of some guy's organs. Because oh, yeah. I just said red ribbons, but I didn't I say that they were made of. you weren't going to do the whole story, though. It's not the whole story, but I was trying to... I was trying to create a mystery in, in, in this tiny little bit by... Having also, something at the beginning that was unclear and then making it clear at the end. Admittedly, that works. So, I'll give you points for that. Fantastic. <laughs> but you still went ten minutes over time. Hey, man. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let the viewers uh, decide who wins. What? <laughs> By the way, I wasn't the psychopath here. <laughs> yeah. I, ten minutes, man? Okay. Ten, cr genius takes time, man. Genius takes time. Hmm. A very, um... Um, well, I'm certain all the viewers will agree that was, they got was, scared silly by your story. <laughs> there was a, t a typo somewhere in here that I, I had to skip over, but I need to fix it. It was... Oh, okay. What was, once a bear, what was once a bear sticky blob roughly resembling the shape of a classic teddy bear. Now be no, I guess that's okay. I just didn't read it right. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's... So, viewers, who won the... Short story. <coughs> <Friend. Alec. coughs> anyway, contest. Mm. You decide. Only you can. Let the me... viewers are not are not here. Uh, they're, they're only way. you can make the right choice, and you know what the right choice is. Remember, I'm not the psychopath here. Hmm. <laughs> I look like a mess. And hey, if you like it, I might <laughs> write more about Detective Gennaro and. Yeah, I could write more about mine too if you want. I'm I'm not sure how much the mic picks up, so I'm not sure. Malganus might be very quiet. You might be like extremely loud. Oh, that's cool. Great. You know, that's cool. Doesn't matter. If we need two subtitles, yes. but um, yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. I guess I guess I can put these up for a download if you guys <laughs> want. And uh, if you're interested in hearing more, I'm sure we can get these two writers to uh, write y'all some more. Gnarly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, thank you all for your time, and uh, uh, what's a good way to end this? I desire a beverage. That's how we end it. A beverage. A beverage.